The Winter Olympics gets less of the crack of the whip when it comes to video gaming compared to Summer Olympics. And so when I think of my favourite Winter Olympic games, I have to go all the way back to probably Lillyhammer 94 on the Sega Mega Drive. Because I'm one of those gamers that enjoy joystick waggling, button mashing, timing based events, silly mini games for lots of different events so that you can then have stupid competitions with your mates. Winter Games 2023 aims to take us back to that era and first and foremost I just want to say I'm delighted that this type of game is still being made even if it has been a while since the last one and although there are quite a lot of issues with this game I'm fundamentally on board for the ride and did enjoy myself playing these games. There's 10 events in total and they're broken into like different discipline types with their own unique control schemes. So the skiing events are downhill and super G. Obviously slalom and giant slalom are noticeably absent, which I thought was a bit odd. But the idea is that because these are the two faster skiing events, it's about turning speed so that you can kind of set yourself up for the next turn by turning in early. Downhill is almost entirely full throttle by pressing and holding R2 because I bought this on PS5. Whereas Super G asks you to take tighter turns by pressing L2 so that you can cut in and reduce your speed. There's then also racing in skis and snowboarding against other competitors and that is the snowboard cross and the ski cross. Now these take place um, with jumps on and so you've got the same mechanics as the skiing but now you have to press and hold X to be able to land a jump at the right time and depending on how far meter uh, is full as you press and hold X depends on how well you land that jump and how much speed you carry on with. That kind of jumping mechanic then translates over to the ski jumping where you have to basically land the tenor mark as close to a certain piece of timing line as possible whilst also pressing and going when the wind is in the right direction for you. You've then got the bobsled and skeleton. They handle the same uh, as each other and this is just a quick button mash straight out of the gate and then trying to keep yourself at the kind of bottom corner of each of the corners as you turn so that you maintain and increase your speed. If you go too high up you can overturn and have a disqualification from your run whereas everything that we've just seen beforehand with all of the skiing and the racing uh, events if you miss gates you just get a time penalty of three seconds every single time. Outside of those there are then a couple of other events that are some of the favourite ones I've probably got in this game. So short track is the most complicated. That requires you to press in rhythm, X and circle, and then kind of hover with the L2 to keep your balance as you go round um, the corners. It reminds me very much of horse racing games actually, because at the end you've got like a sprint button that you can then press and hold. And it reminds me of when you can only use like the whip five times on like winning post or G1 Jockey, that, that kind of series. So it felt similar to that. It's a bit chaotic and I did find that I kept crashing into other competitors and being taken out. So my love-hate relationship with the short track one continues on. Um, but then the two real star disciplines for me were biathlon and curling. And this is really where the game shines best. Biathlon has you rhythmically pressing buttons to go skiing, but then to button mash when you're going up a hill and to press and hold circle as you're going down a hill. Plus you're steering your skier as well, so you're trying to look at keeping like the, the path of least distance as you go around the different venues. Then when you come into the shooting range, you've got one standing and one laying down, and depending on the difficulty mode that you have, easy, normal or hard, depends on how jittery your gun is <laughs> and how horrible the wind is. And so what you're doing is lining up your shot with very tiny UI, it must be said, on purpose, of course, because you're shooting from a distance. And then once you've lined it up, you press to hold your breath so that it steadies your gun and then you fire off, quickly reload, move to the next one and go again. On easy, you can get away with not having to hold your breath and go for it. On medium and hard, you need to because it's so jittery and all over the shot. And it genuinely feels really well done. And I very much enjoyed this. And But I'm a biathlon sucker. I've got a PS2 game that is just about biathlon. <laughs> the other really cool one here is curling. 
the the winter olympic sport event that no one ever thought that they would love but secretly do <laughs> and the reason why curling works so well is that the control scheme is so easy to pick up and understand that it becomes more like a strategic icicle tic-tac-toe more than it being wrestling against the controls. So you just line up your shot with some very clear trajectories. It shows you on the map whether you're going to hit someone else's puck. Um, I'm sure that's not the official word for it. But you get to see the consequences of your action. And then once you press and go and set your kind of um, power, very similar to a golf game actually, where it's kind of going up and down on that power gauge, you will then... Um, be able to kind of sweep and course correct whatever it is that you're doing and put on a bend to your play as well so that you can kind of go around other people's uh, move and then kind of slot in behind or come in at an angle so that it will really hit something else and push it off the map. I found this really cool. The AI are also very, very competent. <laughs> and so they become genuinely good matches alongside just playing with each other as well. Now, I've enjoyed playing all of these events as you go through them all, and I think it works really well in local multiplayer. But this game is technically lacking in almost every area. So in order to cover up the fact that the graphics are very bare bone, they've put on like a Gaussian blur on everything that reminds me heavily of late stage PS2 gaming graphics. <laughs> um, and it hurts the eyes on a really, really big TV. And this particularly comes to the fore whenever you're watching any replays and especially on the bobsled and skeleton because they are going much faster and there's just a lot going on on screen. The other thing I'd say is that the difficulty levers between easy, medium and hard are so huge that it's really difficult to find a competitive selection of AI that match up against you or your friends that you're playing with. Now this becomes less of an issue when you're playing in multiplayer, but if you're doing single player mode, easy is ridiculously easy, medium isn't nearly good enough ease either, but then hard, most of the events are still too easy, and then a couple are just absolutely like handing your ass to you on a plate, so you kind of go, <laughs> and it feels a bit awkward and odd. The animations for some of the events are very, very clunky as well, particularly bobsleigh, where it's so rigid in the way how you move around the pipe that it's actually quite difficult to know whether you're in the right or wrong place or not. There's that combining with that Gaussian blur slash um, frame rate issue means that because quite a lot of the events are around QTE timing based stuff, you're having to press buttons a couple of like milliseconds earlier than what you'd normally do so, so that you can make sure that you hit things right. And that always feels slightly off to me when you're having to prejudge how a QTE is going to work because the game isn't keeping up with what it is that it needs to do. I think there's some really great um, starters here and ideas and it's clear that the team kind of understand at a base level how making a good Olympic Games could potentially work. It needs some more events, it needs some atmosphere, it needs some technical shoring up but this is a series that I would potentially get behind and I could see perhaps in its third or fourth iteration there's a trajectory potentially here that could work very, very well for a decent winter games to come. This one isn't quite it, but that doesn't mean I didn't have fun playing it and will continue to play it and enjoy having a little bit of retro Olympic fun. Take care. Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network, a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higherplane network. Your support makes all the difference and in return you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.